Morning. Sorry I'm running a wee bit late. Morning. See, I'm sorry I'm running a little late today. Light's no brilliant. Ah well. Here we go, we're in. John. Neil. Alex. Stuart. Jim. Duncan. Dave. Barbara. Ruth. Nearly there. Alright then, folks, that's a hundred of you on board. It's Indy Truck Davy in the truck. Coming to you today from Peter Lee. It's an international broadcast this morning. I'm in that there, England. Eh? I'm in the northeast of England, as I say, I'm in Peter Lee, just outside Newcastle. Alright, where it is, I'll tell you, where it is overcast and 12 degrees. Now that's the, that's the weather forecast for Peter Lee in the northeast of England. If you want to know what the weather's like where you are, look at the bloody windy. Hi Dutch, how are you? Um, look at the bloody windy. Alright, well let's get this review underway. There's no much of it folks, yesterday was a bank holiday, but the real reason there's no much for, of it is I picked up the wrong bloody iPad, I picked up a new one which was empty, so I've had to go ahead and bloody scribble some stuff down. Alright, so there's not going to be a lot in this, it's going to be quick and it's going to be bloody painless. Alright, so here we go. Um, C38, I might write that down, folks, that's important. Anyway, there's no COVID figures for yesterday, as it was a bank holiday, so the National Records of Scotland was shut. NHS wasn't producing figures, so there are no COVID figures for yesterday. I gave you the figures for a um, Friday, yesterday, so I'm afraid I have no COVID update for you today, so let's move on and get straight into it, because as I say, there isn't much of it today. I've picked up the rang iPad like a plat for that, right, alright. So Monday started with a mixed bag in the rags. Trouble at all firm game. Bojo to reintroduce right to buy in England. Um, Tory fears over Sue Gray, legal advisor's tweet, which said, if you trust PM, you're a mug. Huh? Um, First Minister, Ukraine war will not stop. Um, a no stop is a ditch and trident. All right, Labour were dragged into party gate row, and we pissy pants, Lord Folks, says Scots is near language. Right, so let's do a wee run down that again. Trouble at all firm game, not interested. Football fans are numpties. All right, um, Bojo to reintroduce right to buy in England. Well, you know, I didn't think there was that many council houses left for them to sell off in England, but apparently there is, and Bojo's going to sell off the stock. No doubt it'll be bought up by um, tenants who will then promptly sell it to the landlords, uh, to, to other people, um, uh, and they'll go back into social, they'll go back into the rented sector, but it'll be private rented sector this thing. Tories fear over Sue Gray's legal advisor's tweet, which said, "If you trust PM, you're a mug." So I guess this is Sue Gray report isn't going to be very good for Bojo. Um, the First Minister stating the Ukraine war won't stop Scotland, an independent Scotland ditch and trident. That's, a, that's really important for us people to hear because right now, with the instability in the world, Scotland's got a big bloody target painted on it, as I've explained. All right, Labour dragged into party gate row. That has to do with Keir Starmer's beers and pe beer and, and pizza, which was supposed to be a work event. Turns out it was a bevy session, and uh, it was also said that uh, Deputy Leader Angela Rayner wasn't there. Turns out Labour lied, she was there. So Labour are in the poo. The Tories are demanding that the police investigate. The police have said, nah, we're no gone. We'll see how that goes. I'm sure somebody will threaten legal action against the police the way they did against the Met, and the investigation will take place. And as to me, pissy pants, Lord's Fuchs, um, saying the Scots is not a language, that was even funnier because it was his, it was his Labour government that uh, that insisted that Scots was a language and had it recognised worldwide as a language. Right. 
Okay, so let's move on. Uh, moving on, yesterday, bank holiday, First Minister's trip to the tour of the TV stations and the radio stations, all right? Now, the First Minister um, he is asked about the timetable for Indiref 2, and the First Minister tells the TV and radio studios that she's aware of the time between now and the, next, uh, the second half of next year. And they... Uh, as far as she's concerned, things are on schedule, right? So, um, she tells the TV studios and the radio stations that she still intends to hold Indy Rev 2 in 2023. And that would be about right, actually. Because it will take to about January to get the legislation through, the, the secondary legislation. Now, they're saying that there might be a court battle of this legislation going through. But we, Michael Gove's on record three times as saying there won't be any court issues. And I don't think there will be either, because if it's drafted correctly under Scots law, there is no much the um, Supreme Court can do, because the referendum a uh, um, Scotland Act has already been passed and signed um, a, and has received royal assent. All as we're getting now is the secondary legislation going through to tell us what type of referendum it will be. Right, I mean... I was surprised when the Referenda Act passed last year, she didn't have an automatic referendum on something like assisted dying in order to cement the legislation in stone. But, as I say, the Referenda Act is through. The bit of legislation we're talking about is to tell us what type of referendum it's going to be. Okay, and as I say, there are suggestions that there will be legal action. That's suggested by the BBC. But um, a... When she was on a uh, Good Morning Britain, there was no suggestion of legal action, although there was a bit of shock and horror on their faces when she said, ah, she's aware of the timetable, and uh, she still plans to go ahead. They thought maybe it would get slated because of the Ukrainian situation. The First Minister was also asked about Trident, and if she still planned to uh, ditch it in light of the, Euro uh, the Ukrainian war. And the First Minister says, yes, an independent Scotland will ditch um, Trident, and it will... Uh, yeah, and it will become an ordinary member of NATO. The majority of NATO countries don't have nuclear weapons, and she hopes to be a full partner in NATO. Okay, dokie. So that was the First Minister being toured around um, the stations. All right. Now, um, as I say, on Good Morning Scotland, um, a... The BBC tell her, or BBC Scotland presenters tell her, if she goes ahead with the legislation, she might find herself in court, as I say, but I doubt it. I doubt it very much. 2018, Westminster recognised Scotland's claim of right, and as such, and since then, Bojo, uh, uh, Michael Gove, as I say, is three times on record saying there won't be any court action. I can't see any grounds for court action anyway. Um, the only thing I could see being a problem is uh, they might want to piss about and waste time take it to the Supreme Court so the Supreme Court can say, ah, it's been properly written in Scots law and send it back. I don't, I don't think there'll be a challenge. All right. Um... The First Minister was also asked about publishing the legal advice and holding in the F2. The First Minister said uh, she's considering it as it would be an unusual move for the government to um, publish its legal advice and it would be a breach of convention and it would uh, set a precedence which has never happened before. Okay. So, um, the legal advice for Indy F2 is going to be put on the table apparently according to the information commissioner by um, June a 10th 2022 there is every chance that it ain't going to hit the table because if the first minister's seriously thinking about it and if she decides no it's, it, it's a breach of convention i'm not going to do that then the information commissioner is going to take it to court so <laughs> there you go but i expect that the um and the black soul tire claim to have seen it and they say the um, legal advice is that she can go ahead and hold the referendum Okay, and we know that a uh, Sir uh, Professor Sir Mark Weller, um, a uh, who was a constitutional legal a uh, constitutional advisor to the United Nations, says it doesn't matter where the UK is going to say, go ahead and have your referendum. You can hold that under international law. But we spoke about that yesterday, all right. Moving on, Monday saw the legal requirement to self isolate a uh, in Scotland if you've a uh, got COVID nineteen scrapped. The guidance says you should still isolate. 
but there isn't any legal legal requirement for it. And that could lead to problems, especially those for those who are on low income. Because they ain't going to self-isolate. They're going to go to work. They're already in a bad way. They need to work. They're on low incomes. So we could find ourselves with asymptomatic, and not just asymptomatic, but people who have got a, um, a mild COVID um, symptoms, like a cold flu type symptoms, go to work the way that people have always went to work with cold and flus. So we could well see um, COVID numbers go up again because people are no longer legally required to isolate. It's just guidance now. Okay. Right, on Monday, because it's a silly season and there isn't really much going on, um, a Western Islands Council are trying to re uh, recruit women to stand in council elections. Won't happen this time, I'm afraid. But in the Western Isles, they can't get women to um, um, stand. They've been running workshops to try and encourage women to stand as councillors, but uh, BBC Scotland were up there and interviewed the uh, um, women and they all said the same thing. It's just no viable for them. Disney pay enough, takes up too much time, too much effort. By the time they've covered childcare costs and travel, um, it's just no worth it for them. So, uh, with a peer that a uh, Western Isles is still no going, is going to have an all male dominated council. Again, all right. And uh, the last thing I pulled out of yesterday, or I remember for yesterday, and I uh, pulled out when I was scribbling this down the day, because I'm doing a couple of articles to talk to you about, was a uh, Sir John Curtis's breakdown of the council elections and how the polling is for the council elections. Okay, so um, Sir John Curtis predicts the Tories will take a bashing in the vote on Thursday. Labour to come second on 26% of the vote. I think the Tories were doing it the 19% um, of the vote. Labour to come second on 26% of the vote. The SNP to make gains on 43% of the vote, which is up from a 37% in the 2017 council elections. Um, the Lib Dems to come a distant fourth on 6% of the vote, so they don't get many councillors at all. And the Alba party is a uh, predicted to get two to three percent of the vote share and may not pick up any councillors at all. That's no my words. That's uh, Sir John Curtis's um, reading of the polling situation. Now polling at two or three percent right across um, a 32 council regions will probably see the Alpa party fail to pick up any councillors according to Sir John Curtis. Okay, so that's the vote shares. You've got the Alpa on two to three percent the Lib Dems own 6%, they're not going to pick much up. The Tories own 19% of the vote. Um, Labour own 26% of the vote. And the SNP own 43% of the vote. It's predicted that the SNP will have the majority of the councils, councillors Scotland-wide. Doesn't mean they'll be in control of councils right enough. And what was interesting about that is Sarwar was on this morning. It was his turn to get a squawk. Um, on the radio, we'll talk a bit more about this tomorrow, but he got away with saying that he, he would be gone for a, um, a windfall tax. Nobody asked him how, how Labour were going to do that when they're not in power in Westminster. And he, yeah, he also um, expects to come second, but he reckons in the next Scottish election he'll be in a position to come first and be the next First Minister. I think Sarwa, um, he uh, has been on the Swally, although I don't know if the man Swally's. Hey, so that's the situation when it comes to the council elections on Thursday. We'll see how it goes. As I say, but on 2% to 3% of the vote share right across um, uh, Scotland's council areas, I think the Alpha Party's put up 100 councillors. Um, with a transferable vote, I don't know whether they'll pick anything up at all. We'll talk a wee bit more about voting tomorrow. Okay. Um, he, as I say, um, yesterday the First Minister's confirmed that she intends to hold a, a referendum. And uh, of course, as you know, yesterday um, uh, there was an article floating about that was saying that uh, Angus Brendan McNeil has been asked by the First Minister to um, table. Um, the plebiscite election idea at an ex-SNP conference. As you know, David and I, we were discussing this and David popped off and asked Brendan, Angus Brendan McNeil whether he'd been asked by the First Minister to do that. He also asked Bre and Angus to give him a straight answer. 
and Angus gave him a straight answer. He's all probably seen the bloody answer. It was posted on our Facebook. So, um, the claims by the Alpha Party that a uh, Angus Brendan McNeil is about to table um, a plebiscite election on behalf of the First Minister, uh, the information is incorrect. Okay. So that's what I've got for you there, guys. Um, that's all I've got because I've picked up the wrong bloody iPad. I've scribbled that down, you know. Um, on the Ukrainian war, um, as far as I can tell, Mario Paul, they only managed to get 100 civilians out of the steelworks um, before the Russians started shelling again. According to the district commander of the marsha that's in the steelworks, there are still hundreds of civilians there, and there are up to 20 to 30 children in that steelworks. So, the deal the UN broker to get the civilians out of Mario Paul, Putin didn't stick by it. But we know what exactly what Putin did. The minute the United Nations Secretary General, um, Antonio Guterres, left Kiev, Putin fired in long range rockets. As if they say, stick it up, the United Nations. So the agreement that was brokered by the United Nations to get civilians out of Mario Paul and out of the steelworks of Mario Paul didn't come to nothing. Only a hundred of them go out. All right. Right, let's move on to this morning and what the papers have to say, all right? The Telegraph has Johnson, Ukraine ready for its finest hour. Apparently Johnson's going to be tub-thumping by a um, addressing the Ukrainian parliament by um, video link and he'll be telling them, you're brave, it's your finest hour, you're going to win. He'll also be telling them that the magic money tree is still working for munitions. Apparently, another 300 million quid's worth of munitions are heading UK <coughs> Ukraine's way while kids go to bed hungry. Pensioners can't afford to heat their houses and food banks are busier than ever. Funny thing about that manage magic money tree. It works for the vast military industrial complex. Disney work for hungry people. Wow. Okay. Um... Uh, the Herald has Johnson likens Putin's invasion of Ukraine to Hitler's Germany. Wow. Right. The Scotsman has First Minister carefully considers release of Indy 2 advice. Indy Ref 2 advice. We're talking about that. The, uh, the um, Information Commissioner says it's in the public interest for this information to be released or some of it to be released. All right. The Looney Rag the Express has Stop stalling and tell truth about Indy Ref 2. What do you expect for a right wing only rag? You know what I mean? The National has. Um, First Minister confident about a, win, a yes win in 2023. The noises she's making doesn't seem to be got a tie in with what the Alpha Party is going to say about there's not going to be a referendum or mere carrots, as, as they put up across the internet yesterday. I do wish the Alpha Party would just chuck it and become a constructive member of the Yes movement. As far as I can tell, all they've done is attack the Scottish Government. It's like a personal vendetta party for Mr Salmon. It's no pretty. They need to get their heads in gear. If we're going to have a referendum, we need the Alpha Party out there um, eh, working with us to change hearts and minds so that we get that one. Because as far as I can tell, since they've come into existence, all they've done is slate the SNP, slate the SNP. They haven't even after the Tories, they haven't even after Labour, they've done none of that stuff. Well, it's time, as I said yesterday, I would love them to become a constructive member of the Yes movement and get with us on trying to win hearts and minds and bringing them over to the Yes side of the debate. Right. The I has... Tories hit by infighting on eve of election. Apparently ministers doing there are fighting about whether Bozo should stay uh, or no. Alright. And the Metro has fail of the century. Right. And this is about a security breach at Windsor. Alright. Apparently some geezer wandered up in a barracks there was invited in because he said he knew the, he was a priest and said he knew the chaplain. And they filled them full of bevy and gave them a bed for the night. It wasn't until the next morning somebody got suspicious and called the cops to get them taken away. Um, 
The Daily Fail says lifers serve just 11 years. And what the fail saying is the Scottish legal system is crap because lifers only lifers serve on average 11 years before they go in the licence. Well, you know what? That's no bad rehabilitation time. You know. Um, the record goes on. Maddie suspect a danger to society. And this is the Maddie McCann disappearing story. And the star has forget passport, uh, passport though is a uh, delay was Britain a uh, to be to be hotter than Crete, Ibiza, and a uh, Saint Tropez. And the main headline on the on the star is we are med for it. M E D as in Mediterranean. So apparently you don't need to worry about nobody looking at your passport, kids, because um, apparently it's going to be lovely. Um, here on these islands, so no need to travel abroad. All right, now as I say, that's all I've got. I picked up the wrong iPad this morning. <laughs> what a diddy! But it happens, the two of them look the same. <laughs> but hey, um, no, no, this Thursday, but the following Thursday, um, Mr. Molly and I are going to start with live broadcasts on a Thursday evening between eight and nine. We'll be putting out notifications for you to come and join us. And we really would like you to get involved in the chat. And, uh, and that way we can discuss things uh, between us. All right. So we'll be starting our live broadcast for the two Davies. Um, not this Thursday, but uh, the following one. Sorry, no next Thursday, but the one after that. That'll give us time to prepare the show. Okay. Now, let's get to business. It would appear the First Minister seems pretty sure that this referendum is going to go ahead. And there's a couple of things I've got to say on that, right? People have been going to get the legislation through, get the legislation through, get the legislation through. But if people have been listening to what Mike Russell and the First Minister have had to say, they want a short, sharp campaign. They've learnt from the Brexit uh, debacle that short, sharp campaigns are more likely to win. It's going to be easier to win this one anyway because we're going to be bang smack in the middle of a really massive contraction in the economy. Uh, fuel and uh, energy costs are going to go through the roof. Mind it's going up again in uh, October when the cap is lifted again and they reckon it's going to go up by another 50%. Wow. So uh, it's not going to be a hard sell, this one. And uh, all these people who say that the SNP have done nothing towards in the, in, 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 uh, in the RF2, you're right. They've put the infrastructure in over the last 15 years, including the time Mr Salmond was in, uh, was in office to put the infrastructure in for an independent Scotland. There is 76 trade enclaves worldwide which will become embassies. There's a, tax, a taxation system being put in place. They've upgraded the schools estate, they've upgraded the, the, the hospitals estate, they've upgraded the road infrastructure, they've upgraded the rail infrastructure, um, they've uh, created a national investment bank. They are in the process of building the social security system, even though it's under devolved administration at the moment. The infrastructure to go full pelt will be in place. And it appears that the First Minister really is determined to have this bloody referendum. So we'll see what happens. All right, we'll see whose predictions are right. The Alpha parties or the SNPs. But as I say, looking at that polling, um, the Alpha party in the, the one other election that they polled, that they, they, they stood in, they got 1.6% of the vote. It's predicted to be 2 to 3%. So you can see that's progress. You can see that, you can see that's progress. Say so we'll see if they're here for the long haul or whether they're a pop-up party. Um, eh, now the usual stuff, all right. When it comes to the cause of independence, can I get you to bell, bell you when I'm finished here, Karen? Okay, it comes to the cause of Scottish independence. Put your partisan politics in your pockets. Get out there and win hearts and minds. Especially after yesterday and the continuous confirmation the First Minister says there's going to be a referendum. You know? And the other thing I'm going to say on that is Westminster will come to the table. They won't cut out. They won't want to be cut out. A Section 30 order will be forthcoming once she's put that legislation forward because they won't want to be cut out. Because if it's held under international law, then the state that we're, we're, we're trying to get independence from is not permitted to interfere. Westminster will want to participate. 
they will want their say, they will come to the table. Okay, now, support the independent media, support uh, the usual broadcast in Scotland, Indie Live, Caledon Media, independent vloggers and bloggers, support the YouTubers out there, they all do great stuff. If they've got fund fundraisers on the, road, on the go and you've got a couple of shekels to spare, throw them in the pot because these guys do great work. Health messaging, I'm down here in England, uh, face masks there, kids. I'm no messing about. Got face masks. Sanitizer. So, face coverings in closed public spaces. Clean hands and surfaces regularly. Social distance and use your nappers. And if you've still got test, test. And remember to submit your test results to the NHS Scotland, OK? Right, that's what I've got for you today, kids. Just a wee shot. Enjoy your day. Catch you tomorrow, where I will pick up the right iPad. <laughs> Bye, the new.